We're on. Okay, what we're going to do is talk about uh, two things. We're going to talk about the distance formula first, and then we're going to talk about the midpoint formula. And this is probably something that you already did in Algebra 1, called the distance formula. Now, I don't know how uh, you were taught the distance formula, but my guess is, usually in Algebra 1, teachers kind of take it a little bit easier on you. And what they do is they throw out the distance formula. They say, okay, here it is. This is the distance formula. This is how you use it. And they show you an example, and then you use it, right? What I want to do, I want to be a little different. I want to show you how they got to the distance formula, okay? How did they come up with this crazy thing? Does anybody remember doing distance formula last year? D equals square root, right, all that kind of stuff. You remember that? It was really long. It was like D equals a square root, parentheses, and the thing was squared. And you know, Y1, Y2, X1, X2. That was a mess. It was a mess? Okay. That was distance formula. Okay. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how we got to the distance formula, and hopefully um, it's not going to be so bad. Um, let's do this. Let's draw myself a little X and Y axis. Yes. Now, really, the only reason I'm doing this is just to show you how we got to the distance formula. I mean, I could, if I wanted to, just say, okay, here it is, learn it, and get the answer right. I'm not, that's not all I'm concerned about, okay? I mean, getting answers right is a good thing, but it's not all I'm concerned about. I want you to understand where it comes from. I think that's important, especially for, um, for honor students, okay? All right, so here we go. What I'm going to do is make a line. Let's make it a different color. What color you like? How about Green. red? Okay. Is that all right? <laughs> Yellow doesn't show up too well. All right, so that's going to that doesn't look red yet, but it will. There it goes. Okay? So here's a line right here. What I want to do is I want to find the length of that line. I want to I'm going to put a little dot right here. Put a little dot down here. And I want to find out how long that line is. I'm going to do this without any points at all, okay? Because I want to come up with a formula, okay? Not just specifically to this line. I want to do a formula for any line, all right? Oh, actually, you know, I got to do a little stuff beforehand. Keep that there. Don't worry about it. Let me just uh, jot something down here real quick. I'll change this back to black. Um, I forgot all about this part. Let's say you're on a trip, all right? And you're on the road, and let's say, you know, you're... Um, you ever see those little green mile markers if you're going down the highway, right? And, you know, you might see a sign that says McDonald's at exit 34. Okay, I'm just making up a number. I have no idea. All right, so mile at exit 34. Well, where are you? You're at exit 20. And usually on the highways, the exits are numbered by the mile marker. Did you know that? For the most part, some highways are different numbers, but a lot of times... Yeah, it might just be, like if you go on the turnpikes, you ever you ever go on a New Jersey turnpike or Pennsylvania turnpike, those accents aren't, those accents aren't numbered by the mile markers. It's like exit 1, exit 2. Exit 2 might be 15 miles down the road, okay? But if you go on like 95, yeah, right. But if you go down like 95, usually the exit numbers are by the mile marker on the road. Okay, we clear? It doesn't matter. On our road, on this road right here, that's the way it is, okay? So, you're at mile marker 20. You're flying down the road, right? And then you see mile marker 20, and, and then you have a sign that says McDonald's, mile marker 34. You're like, okay, good. So, what does that mean? How far do you have to go to get to McDonald's? 14 miles. 14 miles. What math did you do in your head? You added? You, I subtracted, didn't you? Added, Did you add? I added whatever it is to 20. I subtracted, yeah. Yeah, I went 34 minus 20. That's what I did. And then I got what? 14. So it's 14 miles from here to here. So if I wanted to find the distance between two points, what do you do? You take the large number and do what? Subtract the small number from it. Now watch, you could do this as well. You could take the small number and subtract the larger number from it. But there's a slight difference. What would you get here? You'd get a negative 14. Does that make any difference? Does the negative make any difference on how far you have to go? Yeah. yeah. It does? Yeah, not no, that doesn't make any difference. Look, if I'm starting here, watch this. If I'm starting here and I'm going to the 34, is that any, is that a different length than starting at 34 and going to 20? No, no it's the same exact length. The negative just means which direction you're going. That's the only thing, okay? So watch what we do here. You might see this in the book sometimes and it looks a little tricky. I'm not going to worry too much about it. But what they do is this. 
when we talk about the distance, they put it in absolute value, okay? So the absolute value is 14. We know about absolute value, right? Just makes it positive. All right, so that's the way they get away with it. So really, does it make any difference what order we subtract those two numbers to find no. the distance? No. Doesn't make any difference. As long as, as long as you make the number, what, at the end? Positive. Make it positive, okay? So we make it positive and we're good to go. All right? We okay with that? Yeah. All right. That was just a little uh, preface. All right, and let's get rid of that. And now we're ready to do this. Okay, now, hold on to your seats. This point right here, I don't know exactly where this point is, but I'm going to call it. Now, how do you get to it, though? You start here, and you go along the x-axis, and you go up the y-axis, correct? So I'm going to call this point right here x1, y1. That's my first point. So I call it x1, y1. So guess what I'm going to call this second point down here? X2, y2. Yeah, that's a good choice. So x2, y2. So I'm going in this direction in the x. I go this direction in the y. You with me? Yeah. All right. What I want to do is I'm trying to find the length of this red line right here. I want to find out how long it is. It's not just as, it's not as simple as saying uh, 34 minus 20 now, is it? Because it's not just going along one direction. It's going along two directions. It's going along the x direction and what else? It's going along the y direction, isn't it? So let's just stick with the x right now. If I was just going along the x direction, what would this point be right here? That would be x2, wouldn't it? What would this point be right underneath of there? That would be x1. Okay. So how do I find the distance between x2 and x1? Subtract. subtract, right. Just like we did the 34 minus the 20, we subtract x1 minus x2. So that length would be x1 minus x2. Okay. Christian, what color did you say you wanted? Green. green. Which one? That green right there? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so let me draw a straight line, try, and then I'll try to get it right underneath of there. That's pretty close. All right, there we go. So that distance right there, from here to here, what would that distance be? X1 what? Minus, Minus X2. X2. That's that green distance right there. You with me? Yes. All right, let's try another color. Let's go purple, okay? All right, and now we're going to go up, right? We're going to go up to here. Oops. Off a little bit. That's pretty close. All right, now we got to figure out what these points are. What is what is this point on the y-axis? We went over x1, and we went up how far? We went up y1, didn't we? What's this point down here? This is going to be y2. So look, what's this distance from here to here? That's it. It's y1 minus y2. So I've got this for my x distance, right? I've got this for my y distance. Now, why did I do that? I'm trying to find this red one. What do they have to do with the red one? Yeah, you make a triangle. That's good. So what kind of a triangle do we have here? Uh, it's not necessarily because you don't really know the lengths of them. It's a right triangle. That's right, because this is horizontal and this is vertical, so they must form a right angle. So we have a right triangle. Now, Let's go back to the archives a little bit to Algebra 1. You learned how to find um, something when you had a right triangle. If you knew two lengths on a right triangle, you should have been able to find them. Yeah, you got it. What's that called? Uh, this is the hypotenuse. The red's the hypotenuse. What's the rule? Say it, Alex. Pythagorean theorem. You all learned that, didn't you? <laughs> Wow, every time I mention something, there's groans. You should say, oh, yeah, that's so yeah, cool. I remember that. <laughs> All right. Yes. So it's the Pythagorean theorem. My, my writing is atrocious on this thing. Hopefully, I'll get a little bit better. Okay, P-Y-T-H-A-G-O-R-E-A-N, Pythagorean. Named after a guy a long time ago, and I used to know the dates, and I forget it off the top of my head, but it doesn't matter. What was the guy's name that was named after? Pythag. Pythag? <laughs> it's close. Pythagoras is his name. Did you ever know that? No. The guy's name was Pythagoras. Look him up one day. That's his name. You know, like, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of somebody with a one name. I don't know. I was thinking Cher, but that goes beyond. That goes before your day. Who's somebody now that's just Madonna? How about Madonna? That's still a little early for you, isn't it? 
Yeah, okay. You know how she just goes by Madonna? She's got one name. Or Prince or something. This guy was just Pythagoras. It seems like all those guys. A lot of talking. Let's listen now. It seems like a lot of those guys back then were walking around with one name. Like Plato, Aristotle, are those... Um, Hercules, <laughs> right? All these guys, okay? So, um, so Pythagoras. Anyway, that's Pythagorean theorem. What is the Pythagorean theorem? It's what? A squared plus B squared. Yeah, that's easy. Now, the A and the B represent what on this right triangle? Yeah, the X, okay? The X direction, this one side, and the B would represent the Y. What is the C? Represents that distance right there, doesn't it? And since it represents distance, I'm not going to use C. Let's use what for distance? D. How about D? And I'll even use capital D. All right. So this is the distance. I'm trying to find the distance of that red line right there. Make sure I don't go over 15 minutes, okay? All right, so are we ready? Let's do this. So what's it going to be? It's Instead of putting the C out here on the right, let's do it first. So it's going to be D squared equals what? This thing. What is this thing? What's the length of this green one? Good. It's X1 minus X2. What are we going to do with that? We're going to square well, we're going to square it first, okay, because we're doing Pythagorean theorem with it. And then you put plus, and now we'll take the B, this one right here. And what's that going to be? Y1 minus Y2, and do what to that? Square it. Now, you probably won't see it written like this in many math books. Every once in a while, you will. They usually get D by itself. So in algebra, how do I get rid of something if there's a squared with it? Square root. Square root. Okay, so here it is. Here's the distance formula. Ready? Drum roll, please. All right, so it's D equals, thank you, Alex. All right, so D equals big old square root, okay, because we take the square root of both sides, and then you just put all that mess inside the square root. I'm not really Does that make sense at all? Not really. <laughs> well, you're going to have to rewatch it on YouTube. Maybe you'll catch on. All right, so that's the distance formula right there. Let's do a quick example with a distance formula. Um, I'll do this in different colors since, so it stands out. Let's go blue. They will give you numbers. We're going to make up some numbers right now. Is that alright? So this point right here, let's make that up. What do you think? That's about, what, 5, what do you say, 5, 4? Let's say that. Okay, so that point we'll say is 5, 4 right here. And this point would be what, about negative uh, probably more than that, because if this was 5, this would probably be more like 7 or 8, right? You want to go negative 7? Okay, negative 7. And just down a little bit, what do you think? Negative 2? All right, we'll go negative 2. This is what they're going to give you. They're going to give you two points, and you want to find the distance between those two points. Now, look, do you have to plot the points, draw the right triangle and all that stuff? No, you don't have to. You could if you wanted to, I guess, but you don't have to. We came up with this um, distance formula, so you don't have to go through all this mess every single time. We did it once. Now all you got to do is use the formula. So let's do it real quick. Watch how easy this is. So D equals big old square root. I like to do this first. I like to put my parentheses and my squares and all that before I chuck any numbers in there at all. All right. Now what do we put in here? It's the x1 minus the x2. All right. It doesn't matter what order you put the x's. Which one are the x's? The 5 and the negative 7. So it's 5 minus what? Negative 7, which will be 5 plus 7. We'll do that in a second. Let's do the y's now. This is going to be 4 what? Minus negative 2. 5 minus negative is 5 plus, right? Which is 12. What's 12? Let's, I'll write it out. 12 squared. What's this going to be? That's going to be what? 6 squared. It's Again, it's still under square root. So that's 144. That's what? 36. It's under a square root. And what's that going to be? 170, 180? Yep. Okay, square root. Now, if you want, you can just chuck that in a calculator and get a decimal answer for that. Put it in there. 19 point, okay, 13 point 4. Is that what you said? Yeah, 13.42. That's good enough. We'll just go 4. Okay, so the distance is equal to approximately, it's not exactly, but approximately 13.4. And now you've got the distance between this point and this point right here. Okay? Yeah, I'm not going to take off for that, but you could make it approximate if you want to. All right? Let's go on to the next one. That was distance formula. If you still not under, if you still don't quite understand what I just did, go back on YouTube tonight and look at it again, and it might, you know, just pop in your head.